Welcome, my friends. A sequence is a list of numbers in some specified order. For example, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 11, dot, 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 is what is called the Fibonacci sequence, where each number, with the exception of the first two numbers, can be found by adding the previous two numbers together. The Fibonacci sequence shows up all over the place in nature and art. The Fibonacci sequence is also an infinite sequence because, theoretically, it goes on forever. 2, 5, 8, 11 is another sequence. This is a finite sequence since there are only four terms. It doesn't go on forever. This is also what is called an arithmetic sequence because to get the next value in the sequence, all you have to do is add a constant, in this case, 3. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, and 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. The definition of an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where the difference between one term and the next is always the same. For arithmetic sequences, a sub 1 represents the first term, and d represents the common difference between terms. So for our sequence of 2, 5, 8, and 11, a sub 1 is equal to 2, as 2 is the first term, and d is equal to 3, as the difference between any two adjacent terms is 3. Here are a few more sequences. The first one is arithmetic, with a common difference of d equals 6, and a first term of a sub 1 is equal to 5. This is also a finite sequence, as there are a set number of terms. The second one has no apparent pattern, and is definitely not an arithmetic sequence. The third one is also not an arithmetic sequence, as there is not a common difference between terms. There is, however, a common ratio between terms. Each term is twice as big as the previous. It turns out that we call a sequence like this a geometric sequence, which we will discuss more in a separate video. Other than simply listing out the terms of a sequence, there are two main ways that a sequence can be expressed. The first is what is considered explicitly. If a sequence is expressed explicitly, that means the formula allows you to find the nth term of the sequence without needing to know the previous term. For example, a sub n is equal to 38 minus 3 times n minus 1 for n equals 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 is an arithmetic sequence expressed explicitly. The dot 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 implies that this is an infinite sequence, and any natural number can be plugged in for n, which includes 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Sometimes you won't see n defined, and can assume that the sequence goes on forever. If we plug in 1, we get 38 minus 3 times 1 minus 1, which is just 38, as the second term cancels. If we plug in 2, we get 38 minus 3 times 2 minus 1, which is 38 minus 3, or 35. If we plug in 3, we get 38 minus 3 times 3 minus 1, which is 38 minus 3 times 2, or 38 minus 6, which is equal to 32. You can see that this is an arithmetic sequence, as the numbers are decreasing by the same amount on each successive value in the sequence. Each number is 3 smaller than the previous. The nice thing about the explicit formula is, you can find values far into the sequence without needing to know the previous value. So if you plug in 10 for n, you can find the 10th value without needing to know the first 9 values. You would get 38 minus 3 times 10 minus 1, which is equal to 38 minus 3 times 9, or 38 minus 27, which is equal to 11. In general, the explicit formula for a sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, where a sub 1 is the first term in the sequence, n is the number of the term you want to solve for, which will be a variable to plug into the formula, and d is the common difference between terms. Consider this arithmetic sequence. Let's see if we can write the explicit form for this sequence. All we need to do is identify the first term, a sub 1, and the common difference, d. The first term is 17, so a sub 1 is equal to 17. The common difference between terms is 5, so d is equal to 5. Plugging into the formula, we have a sub n is equal to 17 plus n minus 1 times 5. If you want to, you can distribute this out to get 17 plus 5n minus 5, 
or just 5n plus 12. If you aren't sure if you have the formula right, you can plug in some numbers to see if they match the sequence. If you plug in 1, you notice that the n minus 1 term in the unsimplified formula disappears, and you would be left with just 17. That's why the n minus 1 is in the formula, so that when you plug in 1, the second term disappears, and you are left with just the constant. You could also plug into the simplified form to get a sub 1 is equal to 5 times 1 plus 12, which is equal to 17, our first term. If you plug in 4, you will get 5 times 4 plus 12, which is 20 plus 12, or 32. This matches the fourth term from the sequence. Take a moment to see if you can write out an explicit formula for this arithmetic sequence. Okay, the first term is a sub 1 is equal to 16, and the common difference is d is equal to negative 3. So the formula is a sub n is equal to 16 plus n minus 1 times negative 3. Now, I generally would be okay with keeping the formula like this, but if you want to, you can simplify it by distributing. We would have 16 minus 3n plus 3, which simplifies to negative 3n plus 19, which is an alternate way to write this sequence, which is a little nicer to plug into, but slightly less informative, as it hides your first term, which is very clear in the unsimplified form. Now, an alternative and admittedly less useful way to write out a sequence is in what is called recursive form. This type of sequence formula allows the nth term of the sequence to be calculated using the previous term. Here is an example of a recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence, which is written in two parts. You must be given the first term, which here is a sub 1 is equal to negative 8, which means the sequence starts at negative 8. Next, you need to be told a rule that allows you to calculate the next term in the list given the previous term. Here we have that a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 7 for n is greater than or equal to 2. This means for every number after the first number of negative 8, including the second number, the third number, the fourth number, etc., indicated by the greater than or equal to 2, to find the next number in the list, take the previous number and add 7. I know the notation a with subscript n minus 1 can be confusing, but all it is saying is take the previous number in the list. To find the next number in the list, a sub n, you take the previous number, a sub n minus 1, and add the common difference of 7. We can use the recursive formula to write out a few terms. The first term we already know is negative 8. The second term is a sub 2. To find a sub 2, we need to take a sub n minus 1, which is a sub 2 minus 1, and add 7. But a sub 2 minus 1 is just a sub 1, the previous term, so we have a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus 7. This is negative 8 plus 7, which equals negative 1. To find a sub 3, we take a sub n minus 1, which is a sub 3 minus 1, or a sub 2, and add 7. We have negative 1 plus 7, which is equal to 6. For a sub 4, we take the previous term, a sub 3, and add 7, so that we have 6 plus 7, which is equal to 13. In general, we can write out an arithmetic sequence in recursive form by first stating a sub 1, and then stating that a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus d, for n is greater than or equal to 2. And yes, it will always be for n is greater than or equal to 2, unless you have a finite sequence that gets cut off somewhere. Consider this arithmetic sequence, which we want to write in recursive form. All you need to know to write an arithmetic sequence in recursive form is the first term and the common difference. The first term is a sub 1 is equal to negative 7, and the common difference is d is equal to negative 6. So the recursive formula, written in two lines, is a sub 1 is equal to negative 7, and a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 minus 6. As mentioned earlier, the main problem with recursively defined sequences is that you have to know the previous number in the list to find the next one. So you can't find the 15th number in the list until you have the 14th, so it isn't all that useful. We would prefer to have sequences defined explicitly, so that we can plug in n and get whatever number term in the sequence we want. Let's try this problem. We want to find the 12th term of an arithmetic sequence that has a common difference of d equals 8 with a first term of a sub 1 is equal to negative 1. There are a few ways you could go about solving this, 
but perhaps the most straightforward way is to create an explicit form equation for this sequence and then plug in 12. We know that the explicit form equation of an arithmetic sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We are told a sub 1 and d, so we can plug into the formula to get a sub n is equal to negative 1 plus n minus 1 times 8. Now, if we want the 12th term, that means we just have to plug in 12 for n. We have a sub 12 is equal to negative 1 plus 12 minus 1 times 8, which is a sub 12 is equal to negative 1 plus 11 times 8, or negative 1 plus 88, which is equal to 87. The 12th term of this sequence is 87. So in general, you might be noticing that if you want to find the nth term, just take your first term and add the common difference one less time. So for the sixth term, you need to add the difference five times, or for the 15th term, you have to add the difference 14 times, or as we just did, to find the 12th term, we had to add eight 11 times, indicated by the 11 times eight. Here is another example. If we want to find the 22nd term of an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of d equals negative three and a first term of a sub one is equal to five, we need to take five and add the common difference of negative three one less time than 22, which is 21 times. So we have five plus negative three times 21, which is five plus negative 63, which is negative 58. The reason you have to add one less time than the term that you are solving for is because you don't have to add anything to get the first term. For the second term, you have to add the difference once. For the third term, you have to add it twice, etc. Hopefully you're getting the idea. Here is another similar problem. We want the 70th term. We see that the first term is 15 and that the common difference is six. If we want the 70th term, we have to add the common difference 69 times. We have 15 plus 6 times 69. 6 times 69 is 414, so we have 15 plus 414, which is equal to 429. Let's try this one. If the common difference in an arithmetic sequence is d is equal to 4, and the 12th term is a sub 12 is equal to 89, find the 15th term, a sub 15. The inefficient way is to write out all the terms between the 12th and 15th term to see what we get. You would have 89 for the 12th term, 93 for the 13th term if we add 4, 97 for the 14th, and 101 for the 15th. So 101 is the answer. This works, but would be really annoying if I was to ask for, let's say, the 100th term. A more efficient way is to look at how many terms away we are. The difference between 15 and 12 is 3, so all you need to do is add 4 3 times. You would have 89 plus 3 times 4 which is 89 plus 12, or 101. Given a sub 5 is equal to 31 in an arithmetic sequence, find a sub 32, if the common difference is d is equal to negative 5. The difference in the subscripts is 32 minus 5, which is equal to 27. So we need to add negative 5, or subtract 5, 27 times. We have a sub 32 is equal to 31 minus 5 times 27, which is negative 104. The 32nd term is negative 104. What about this one, where you have the common difference of negative 4 and the 95th term of a sub 95 is equal to negative 342, where we want to find the 35th term, or a sub 35. This is a bit trickier, as we need to work backwards. We have the 95th term and want the 35th term. Going forwards, we would be subtracting 4 from each term to get the next one, but going backwards, Earlier in the sequence, we'll have to add 4 to each term. The difference in subscripts is 95 minus 35, which is 60. So we need to take the 95th term of negative 342 and add 4, not subtract 4, 60 times since we are going to an earlier value in the list. We have a sub 35 is equal to negative 342 plus 4 times 60, which is equal to negative 342 plus 240, or negative 102. So if you are going forwards in the list to find a later value, use the common difference. And if you are going backwards in the list to find an earlier value, you need to change the sign of the common difference. Now, sometimes you might be interested in summing a sequence, what is technically called a series. So if instead of commas separating the values in your sequence, you have plus signs, you have a series. Take for example, 
4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13 plus 16 plus dot dot dot. Say that we want to sum the first five terms, which I have shown here. Obviously, you could just plug them into your calculator, but that isn't going to work so well if I asked you to sum the first 500 terms, so we would like to have a nice formula. I'm not going to prove it to you, but it turns out that the sum of an arithmetic sequence can be found by s sub n is equal to n times a sub 1 plus a sub n, all divided by 2, where s sub n stands for the sum of the first n terms, n is the number of terms that you want to sum, a sub 1 is the first term, and a sub n is the last term in your sum. If we want to sum the first five terms, n is equal to 5, a sub 1 is equal to 4, and a sub n is a sub 5, which is equal to 16. Plugging in, we have s sub 5 is equal to 5 times 4 plus 16 divided by 2, which is equal to 5 times 20 over 2, or 100 over 2, which is 50. This is the same thing as 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13 plus 16, which is also equal to 50. Let's look at another example. We have negative 3 plus 2 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus 562, which is an arithmetic series, because now the numbers don't simply make up a list, they make up a sum. The dot 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 indicates there are a bunch more numbers hiding in there between 7 and 562. We have a sub 1 is equal to negative 3, and a sub n is equal to 562. The number of terms in the sum, n, is a bit tricky to find. How many terms are there between negative 3 and 562? We can find n by the use of our explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. We know a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d is the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. The common difference is d is equal to 5, so we have 562 is equal to negative 3 plus n minus 1 times 5. Adding 3, we have 565 is equal to n minus 1 times 5. Dividing by 5, we have 113 is equal to n minus 1. Adding 1, we find that n is equal to 114. There are 114 terms in our series that we would like to sum. Plugging into the sum formula, we have s sub 114 is equal to 114 times negative 3 plus 562 divided by 2 which is 114 times 559 divided by 2. If you plug this into a calculator, you get 19,899. The sum of the first 114 terms is 19,899. How about this one? 7 plus 4 plus 1 plus dot 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 plus negative 266. a sub 1 is equal to 7, d is equal to negative 3, and a sub n is equal to negative 266. Plugging into the explicit formula, we have negative 266 is equal to 7 plus n minus 1 times negative 3. Subtracting 7, we have negative 273 is equal to n minus 1 times negative 3. Dividing by negative 3, we have 91 is equal to n minus 1. Adding 1, we have n is equal to 92. Plugging into the sum formula, s sub 92 is equal to 92 times 7 plus negative 266 all divided by 2, which is 92 times negative 259 divided by 2, which simplifies to negative 11,914. Let's try this one, which is defined using summation notation. We have the sum from n is equal to 1 to 137 of 5n minus 9. This tells us to plug in n equals 1, then n equals 2, then n equals 3, until we get to n equals 137 and then add all the numbers together. Plugging in a few values, you will be able to see that we have an arithmetic series. 5 times 1 minus 9 is equal to negative 4. 5 times 2 minus 9 is positive 1. 5 times 3 minus 9 is equal to 6. The first term is a sub 1 is equal to negative 4, and the common difference is 5. We want to find the sum of the first 137 terms, so n is equal to 137. Let's find the 137th term by plugging it into the formula. We have a sub 137 is equal to 5 times 137 minus 9, which simplifies to 676. Plugging into the formula, we have s sub 137 is equal to 137 times negative 4 plus 676 divided by 2, which is the same thing as 137 times 672 divided by 2, 
which simplifies to 46,032. The sum of the first 137 terms is equal to 46,032. Alright my friends, that completes this video relating to arithmetic sequences.